Hey, what it do with the business is? It is another week in the books with the On Deck TV show. I am Spike Lou. Man, how at your boy Animal Brown, Animal underscore Brown, if you're looking for me on socials. Absolutely. And I am Spike Lou on them same social sites. Holla at your boy, boy, AB, what's going on out there? I can't call it, man. Freezing my ass off these last two days. Back to the 40s, dude. I don't know if it's going to be 70s, 60s, 30s when you walk outside. It's unpredictable and it's stupid. The great thing about the 8-8, eight, eight, it don't never get really that cold. But like right around here, you get, like you said, a 69 day. And then it's like 48. This, and then it's like 72 and then it's 53. Like, what is going on? Why? It don't make sense. Your weather, as my grandmama called it, right? Absolutely. And that's why I stay in the house because I ain't got time to get a cold or flu or any other anything, dude. Ain't nobody got time for that none shit None of the right above. Now. None of the new strains. I don't want none of that shit. None of the watered down COVID. Nothing, nigga. <laughs> so hey, man. That was our weather report for the week. Um, If you live in the A. But look, man, we got an action-packed episode. I know y'all have seen that Mount Rushmore of Chicago list that went viral over the weekend. We are going to talk about that and give the real Mount Rushmore of Chicago. We bring it back that series. We never did Chicago. If you've been rocking with us for a minute, you know we've done a couple of other cities. We've even done a couple of albums, Mount Rushmore of cities and states. But we never did Chicago artists. So here we go. We're going to do it this week. Um, also, a couple of other things. J. Cole, it looks like he's gearing up for a new project, dropped a new record. We're going to talk about that. And Gucci Man, another artist of his, is locked up. Joe Budden is placing the blame on Gucci himself. We're going to talk if that's fair or foul. But first, your man's 21 Savage is under fire for some very interesting clubhouse comments he made last week, arguing with someone I still don't know who they are. Um, about people in Chicago and who he knows to that does what, where, when, and a whole bunch of incriminating. Uh, my question is, this is a big deal, little deal, or no deal? It wouldn't be a big deal if we didn't see Young Thug get body slammed for taking a part for his RICO trial that he's up for right now. So, yeah, yeah this could have went and gone with the wind as like normal rapper jargon or whatever it may be. But it seems reckless by 21 Savage. And I thought that he was smarter than this. And I thought that he was at a stage in his career where he's working with uh, Drake. He's doing all of these things that are glowing him up. And he'll be talking about, oh, my squad did this. And you know how we come like, bro, relax. Mm. Ice-T said he think that the police made Clubhouse. Some other people were coming out and saying that. And I, I just don't get, again, 21 Savage going back and forth. It's okay to have street cred. It's okay to nigga to know where I'm coming from and what I'm about. But to sit on Clubhouse and do it make it just seem so strange. Yep. It make it seem like that UK shit that came up and that he ain't really from here, that the poking that people were doing at him kind of bothered him. It made him want people to recognize, like, I'm gonna recognize where I'm from. And he ain't, he shouldn't be in the recognized game no more. I'm 21 Savage, you know where I'm coming. I'm gonna do something for you. Come on, man. Bro, you have the hottest record in the country right now for the past couple of weeks with the biggest artist on the planet. Why are you on a chat line with niggas you've never met screaming at the top of your voice? <laughs> How did you get that angry, dude? I didn't listen to the full conversation because I'm not, number one. Yeah. I ain't got time for any of that. But how did you get that mad? I didn't hear what led up to it, but there's no bro. Hang the phone up, bro. <laughs> like if you're that upset, you know you can hang the phone up. Do they hey. got some type of deal with with Clubhouse? Bro, he must. To he there? gotta have an endorsement deal or something. He has to. Or something. That's, that's the only way he's still on there. That's the only way you can justify it is if you're getting paid to be on there. That's the only way I can see that you're willingly getting on this chat line with grown men arguing about how many bodies your homeboys in Chicago got. Cause now what the motherfucking police are going to do, they're going to hop on your Instagrams and your Instagram stories. And they're going to see who you be with that's in Chicago. And then they're going to hop on their Instagram stories and they're going to see who they be with. And it's going to be a suspect in the murder over here, bro. And that's all it's going to take. And they're going to say, appreciate, thank you. And they're going to bam two or three niggas and give them football numbers. Like, I, I don't understand. You're supposed to be an artist of a certain stature. Drake's not doing this, bro. Drake's doing two sold-out shows in Apollo, nigga, with $500 seats apiece. 
That's what he doing. Where is your show at, bro? Like, where, oh, where is your 21 Savage Fox Theater show? Why are you on Clubhouse arguing with grown men? It's weird. I don't know if it's a big deal, little deal, or no deal, but it's a weird deal. Facts. It show how bored niggas be, too. Like, That's you said, like, bro, I don't got... I don't, I don't have the time to sit here and give a fuck what you niggas from Chicago think I'm hard or soft or anything, pause. And to even add to the lure, like what you said, bro, as soon as that nigga talking shit, I'm hanging up. That's then it. A couple weeks from now, you might hear him dead. Then that's really going <laughs> to add to it. Nigga, yeah, what has Joe Gotti said with all this like, side talk about him? I'm just dating Angela Simmons, bro. I don't know what's going on. I'm right here at the Grizzlies game. But I'm sure nobody, like he ain't. It's just weird, like you said, for 21 Savage to still be engaging in those type of conversations, especially with everything that's going on in, in the A, and, and we see how they're coming for rappers and what they're trying to use in the court of law. So yes, yeah, nuts. It's 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 crazy. It's, it's more shocking than anything. And I and I thought he was smarter than that, though. Like you can't get tricked out of your spot, dude. Like you, you can't. Do anything but get tricked out of the bag, bro. Like, just, I, it doesn't make sense. He seems pretty intelligent when you hear him speak on art. You, you, he noticed, you know, if you notice, he doesn't wear jewelry anymore. He's talked about that. He only does investments. He owns his own masters. Like, he's clearly got a head on his shoulder. I got people around him that have their heads on their shoulders. And I'm, I'm sure they called him after this and said, bro, what is, what are you doing? Why? What is this? A little too carried away. Way too carried away, actually. Way. Like there's no reason to be sitting there going over there, as we said. But shout out to the Clubhousers and 21 Savage, man. Also on social media this week, man, if you were browsing on YouTube as you do and you got put in J. Cole type beat, which I never thought would work, it did. It worked. Mm -hmm. A producer on YouTube had a J. Cole type beat listed. And guess who was on YouTube searching for beats? Your man, Jermaine Cole. He laced the beat. Let Buddy have it and put it on his YouTube page. Yeah. A.B., when it comes to rollout, to me, this nigga J. Cole is impeccable at making this shit seem genuine and new and grassroots. How did you feel about this rollout, this song, these bars that Jermaine blessed us with? Yeah, man, this is a, another genius rollout from J. Cole. It's between him and Drake, man. They the rollout kings, bro. I ain't gonna lie. They stay with a fire Drake rollout. Drake what? not even close to this spot, bro. Stop, stop. Don't try to throw Drake in The here. fake he, he, tiny he, desk, the fake Howard yeah, Stern, yeah. and the fake that, bold yeah. cover? Niggas thought that shit was that's real. Cool. Yeah, that's cool, but it ain't this, though, bro. Come on, bro. This God's plan? People like him, bro. God's plan? What he give a dollar away? To do? What he, he gave $100 away to 100 people, bro? This shit is major. Don't try to throw Drake in here, niggas. I don't think nobody doing it like him, but get off. Go ahead. <laughs> No, nah, it this is super dope. First of all, the song is called Procrastination. It was a it was a super dope song, number one. Number two, the cover art for the single is the text that Cole sent to the producer, which is even more dope. As of right now, it's got 2.3 million views. Um, salute to the, the producer's name is Batman. He got switched that up. That ain't really nothing. Um, but he's got some fire Still beats fun, on man. here. That name from Slaw. Uh, but he got some fire production. I, I went and clicked through a couple of other tracks. And this is big for the there's a huge YouTube community of producers who do that thing. They'll make a beat and put it up, and it'll be J. Cole type beat, Jay-Z type beat, Kendrick type beat, etc. And you never know, one day the person that you listed might hop on here and come across your your beat. It's happened before. Pop Smoke found his producers on YouTube. Um, so and th them niggas was in uh the UK and he found them on YouTube, and so they ended up making hits together and stuff. So it can happen, but it's a big look for the community. Salute to this man, salute to the whole story. The story is dope as a whole. Sh shout out to J. Cole, man. Top two rollout guides right now in rap. Number one, easy as far as rollout guides. This I spoke about it a little bit a little bit on another week in the books, man, because this happened, I think, Thursday and it reading the text to it, and then as content creators ourselves who've been in this space for years, you never know who's listening, who takes your content in, type of feedback you get, how you've helped people. So I know for that guy that produces this beat who probably looking at it like, you know, maybe he think it's gonna happen one day, maybe he had got down to his luck and thought it never was gonna happen. However, he was feeling to get that text from Cole, yeah. breaking it down and being like, here bro, this this you, 
It helped me actually as a creative. That shit is amazing. Man. Just the inspiration alone. I see people bickering, oh, he didn't pay him and this and that. Like, it ain't even about that, bro. It's about the look and him. I feel like that that guy, Batman, being able to say, you know what, this shit is possible. Like yep. I am able to chase my dreams and do that. And for J. Cole to be able to provide that for somebody at this stage in his career, oh, that's fire, man. Because you would think at this stage, this is the untouchable stage. This is where I'm at peak superstar. And where I really, like with 21 Savage, we were talking about the reason they on Clubhouse, he's trying to connect with the people. I done made it so far that I can't talk to people and go back and forth True. on the regular, so I got to go on Clubhouse. J. Cole did it the right way. Let me sit here. I'm procrastinating. I'm bullshit. Let me just type in J. Cole type B. Oh, this is fire. Oh, I'm going to lace him with 50, 60 bars, and I'm going to send it to him, and it's going to promote me to start doing my album and push me to where I need to be. The whole story, man, that's just that's, that's fire to me. That's next level. It's brilliant thinking. It's great marketing, a great rollout. Shout out to Jermaine Cole and the bars. Like, even, it. like I felt some of that he shit. He killing man. it. But like for him to be at this age and talking about what he's talking about as successful as he is, still for people who are trying to make it and achieve their goals, for them to be able to relate to it, the part we talk about, I'm putting the bucket down there again and see if anything comes. Like, bro, that nigga was lacing that shit. Yeah, nah, nah, he was in his bag. Oh, Absolutely, I can't wait for that album now. That's he's in his bag, and that the album is supposedly on the way. He clear, he wiped out his Instagram. That's usually a sign that something's for, on deck. For M extra, for the yeah. M extra. M extra followed suit, wiped out his Instagram. <laughs> we don't know if he has a project coming. Who knows? But that is definitely a good look for all parties involved. You never know. This cat might get some calls from some labels. J Cole let him have a song on his YouTube page, so that monetization go to him. So I don't know what people talking about being paid and all of that. Like that's the look. He might have two or three joints on Cole album when it come out. Who you never know, bro. Know. So right. it's super dope. And shout out to that the, the DJ. And I'm mad I can't remember his name, but it was a DJ dude that was making blends during the quarantine and Fat Joe took one of his blends and made a song out of it with Rihanna. And so, and that turned out to be pretty dope. Um, I'm mad. I can't remember homie name, but it's, it's happening and that's cool, man. That's a good look. Um, man, moving on, man, Joe Budden. Speaking of, you never know who's watching and who's listening. Shout out to Joe Budden. Joe Budden has had some very interesting comments regarding Gucci man's 1017 record label and their latest artist to get in trouble. Um, of course, if you didn't know, Gucci Mane's had probably the worst luck when it comes to his trying to revamp his label. Fushiesty, one artist, is serving five years right now. Fujiano is also serving five years. Hot Boy West was arrested on a robbery charge. And Matt Critter just recently was arrested on first-degree murder. Then on top of that, Big Scar tragically passed away a couple weeks ago. So things aren't looking great over at 1017. Joe Budden on his podcast uh, posed a question and said people need to start looking maybe at Gucci Mane and start placing some of the blame on him. He doesn't believe it's a coincidence that it's Gucci Mane's artists that are constantly getting in trouble. Um, are these accusations or is this viewpoint fair or foul? Yeah, I think this is fair. I listened to Joe when he said this. Um, I can't depend on Gucci Man to save niggas' lives. So I don't want people to think that the expectations are skewed. However, when you got five, six people, people are passing away. The thought process is that he, Gucci Man has made it. He ain't out here participating. He ain't active. So in signing these people, you would think that he's providing a better lifestyle for them, some type of mentorship, at least being able to show them that there's another way. However, it seems that he's just co-signing, oh, I want the realest niggas on Tim 17 because that's how I came up and that's how I did it. That don't work anymore, and we're seeing that. It, Gucci man was in and out of jail and he was still able to have a successful rap career. But we're talking about six people on your roster and it continuously happened. It seems to me that you would bring these little niggas in and be like, hey, we at least for the money standpoint, even if you don't care about them, to be able to ma maximize the profits from what you've signed. Like, I want y'all around me. I want y'all seeing how to conduct business. I want y'all right here in the A with me moving around. I don't need niggas in Arkansas getting locked up, in Florida robbing niggas for fucking weed. Like, all y'all niggas is at the 1017 factory, and it doesn't seem like that's happening. So to Joe's point, what are you signing these niggas for? Are you signing right. these niggas for the publicity to show when somebody says uh, such and such got locked up or he was a part of 1017? We're about to talk about it later with the nigga that was trying to get a verse for Mike Jones. Mm -hmm. It's just, 
all negativity versus what we see with the other labels like QC versus what we see with TDE versus what we see with Dreamville. There's so much positivity in trying to get the, the group, the team on. If Gucci followed that suit versus I'm trying to sign the realest nigga alive, I feel like 1017 would be more successful. So absolutely, I place the majority of the blame on him and also the artist, not recognizing that this is my chance and continuing to do the same bullshit. Yeah, for sure. Um, we give Gucci a lot of props for his his um, talent evaluation skills. We did a whole episode called The Gucci Man Effect, and we talked about all of the artists, successful artists that have come from that Gucci Man tree um, that he's either discovered or played a part in their career starting off and blowing up. But maybe his A&R skills aren't as good as we thought they were. Maybe it's only one-sided. Because it's not it, when you're good A and R, you know. Not only do you have to pick somebody that's talented, but you have to find the people that are talented and got their head on straight, willing to work, and be in the studio, be out of trouble, understand what's at stake the whole night. It doesn't seem like these cats understand the scale and what's really going on. They may be talented, they may be dope, may make good music, but there's something that's missing on that second half of the a and R part where you need to get people that understand they got their head on straight. We've seen this a hundred times before so-and-so almost signed to so-and-so, but nigga, they did some dumb shit and they were like, Oh, never mind. This nigga not going to be able to handle it. He's not going to be able to handle this advance. I'm about to give him. Never mind. You know what I'm saying? I can already see it, bro. Get your mind right. And then come back and holler at me. Or I can see the niggas that you around. Ah, oh, no, nah, I can't. We're not going to be able to do this. Cause I already see where that's headed. That part is missing. And Gucci's A and R skills, dude. Clearly, because that is highly unlikely that you have five or six people on one label locked up or dead at the same damn time, dude. Like it's highly unlikely. And so, at some point, the one common denominator is Gucci Mane, dude. So you have to look at him. Some of the blame has to be placed on him. And he just—I don't know what it is, but he has to be more hands-on with the people that he's signing. And if they got to do a fucking I don't boot camp, nigga, resort or lock. They got to go away to a studio, nigga, far away from home and nigga go through a boot camp or something. I don't know, but whatever he's doing right now ain't working. And also, too, if it's too much for you or him, excuse me, if it's too much for him, bring the other person in. We see the baby has slim. True. We see the P got Coach K. Even with TDE, you got Punch and you got Top Dog. Yep. Like if Gucci is the person that can spot the talent and know they from the gutter and I'm going to stamp them as real, then there needs to be a business person there that's going to be like, okay, you didn't pass the Gucci man test. Now you need the Coach K test. Now you need everything that you just said. I need to make sure your head's straight. I need to make sure you know what to do with this money. I need to make sure when you're out on the road, you represent 1017 the right way. And that ain't just on no gangster shit, on right. some money shit. You know what nope. I'm saying? So yeah, if, if if Gucci not on that shit, if like you saying, I ain't he ain't made it there in his growth yet, have somebody else come in and do it. That's a good point. T.I. had Jason Jeter. Yeah, I had Jeter. Yeah, Nigga, like, it's a lot of people. It's always two. His name is Jay. Like, yep. you know, like, bring somebody else in, bro. Yeah, that's that, that. That's a good point. But it's at, at what point? Though, I would love to hear Gucci's thoughts on this. Like, I know he already do interviews. I don't know who could get it out of, and maybe Big Facts. Maybe drink champs. I don't know, but I would love to hear his perspective on this, dude. <laughs> I really would. Yeah. And it's too bad he don't really do interviews like that. It would be a very interesting conversation with him and Joe Budden. Well, that would be must see TV. If, if Joe brought this to him, that would be must see TV. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I tap in for that for sure. Facts, man. Before we get to the Chicago Mount Rushmore, XXL put out a feature price list what? ab i wanted to know these 2023 feature prices of all the people listed which one surprised you the most man there's a couple on here dude i'm not i'm not gonna lie <sighs> bro why is polo g 150 000 for a verse like let's man, keep it a stack bro who it with all that due respect awesome. and i like polo g that's chicago stand up Who's that paying dude 150 for bro? Crazy, bro. Who, who paying 150, bro? Man, for Polo G first? Yes. I, that's 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 I like I I didn't I wasn't shocked when I saw you it. Should Polo be. G, he'll start to the young people. Stop that. That ain't the most egregious thing on here. You know it's not. What's the most you know egregious it? thing on here? Come on, man. The baby three hundred thousand. 
That's valid. Nigga, that's valid. kick rocks. You that's valid. Serious? That's valid. There's no way a nigga that sold five thousand his first week <laughs> is charging me three hundred and fifty thousand for nothing, bro. It's three hundred. Wow. It's not three fifty. You trying to add extra sauce? I ain't from Dubai, nigga. You ain't gonna pour this shit on me. Three hundred for the baby? Get the fuck out of here, bro. And he gonna he gonna spaz on it, nigga. Yeah, even worse than that is that YK Osiris for a hundred. That's YK. Okay, listen, he's never got that price. Is he? No one has ever paid him a hundred thousand for that feature price. I, I guarantee that. YK Osiris is on here listed a hundred thousand for a feature, and it's a reason we, me and you, have probably never heard this nigga on the never song heard, before. Never heard. I've never heard of him. I, I've only seen him doing Instagram skits, getting this clowned. Kid. Yeah, and, and niggas joking on him. That that ain't that can't be a hundred thousand a verse. That can't. It's impossible. Is the Nikki five hundred k that she's asking for valid? Yes, Nikki a legend. That's and and like half a mil is nuts. No, but think about it though. Like a Nicki Minaj feature, like that ain't really happening too often, nigga. And this and explains you know gonna, why. Yeah, that's true. And you know she's gonna rip it too because she can rap. I'm not sure if I would pay the 500000 I guess this answers the question as to why we don't see her work with new or female artists because that's I don't think they're paying that either. But that's true. I could I could understand her asking for it, especially like the Nicki Minaj that we know, that persona. Yeah, of course she asked for 500000 Three fifty like, for Little Dirk is nasty, though, and that's the Drake effect. Let's be clear. Yeah, facts. And he's the- <laughs> he getting that whole three fifty, nigga. He From who? 30, be ready to spend that. Well, putting well... Who featuring Dirt? Future? <laughs> like Lil That's Wayne? A swap. Like, anybody that is, yeah, anybody that wants the Dirt feature, I feel like they can afford it. That's a swap. That nigga ain't on like local Chicago nigga shit. This J. Cole, what is it? 2,000 a word? Is J. That Cole? 2,000 a word. Um, that's nuts. 2,000 a word. <laughs> that's funny as fuck, though. Yeah. He said he's the most expensive than any rapper verse price thus far. Uh, yeah, because he said that. He said that on a song. He said that on that London. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that is funny though. Two thousand a word is funny though. That's Not hilarious. That's cap, but it's funny. That is hilarious. Yeah, I, I thought that was interesting, man. Little baby on here, just for the record, there's another one. Little baby on here for three hundred thousand, which is that's his stock is falling like crazy. Um, NBA young boy, NBA young boy for three hundred. You remember Game had to take his verse off of his album because they couldn't clear that three hundred. <laughs> Said the oh, budget was man. already spent. Man, wait a minute, nigga. Sure it was. Bro, come on, bro. I nigga had 26 tracks, nigga. Every song had features. <laughs> nigga. You, had, you came to I your last 300. This one. This 250 right here. What about that Snoop for a quarter million? That's worth it, right? That's um, probably the most reasonable price on that. 16 bars from Snoop for 250 is a lot, bro. In, 20, in 2023, that's a lot. It's worth it though. It's Snoop. He said he need another two fifty to do the video. Oh, no, nah, stop. <laughs> you ain't gotta do all of that. You ain't getting a half a million for the song, <laughs> bro. Like, come on. Like, like come on, Snoop. Ain't no way, bro. Even if you was a young nigga and the label was paying, you like, man, I need that Snoop. They gonna like two fifty. You better find somebody else. Nigga. You can get Vince Staples or something. <laughs> 250 and he said you got an hour for the video nigga max <laughs> that's oh, one God. scene bro <laughs> you gotta change clothes at least nigga like fuck that. <laughs> that's nuts oh uh, shit man y'all let us know if any of these were worth it man what <laughs> would you break the bank for any of these feature cost that them shits is crazy man we in the wrong business we should have been rappers out here um let's take it to the chicago mount rushmore man that was a viral post that was spread like wildfire over the week a chicago mount rushmore man these are the four faces that they had on the chicago mount rushmore they had g herbo little dirk king vaughn and chief keef that was the four now people understandably shared this wearing it out it was actually the drill Mount Rushmore. You got it. They did try to say Chicago slash drill Mount Rushmore. So we'll shoot them some bell. We'll say this is the Chirac Mount Rushmore. Too. It can't be like we'll give them Chicago, that. Man. The actual Chicago Mount Rushmore, we're gonna talk about too. Yeah. And spoiler alert, G Herbo, even though that's my man, he's not on it. I thought clean. she was gonna slide G Herbo in there. Absolutely not. I like Lil Herb. I like that when he was Lil Herb. Lil Herb and Bibby. And Bibby, shout out to Bibby. Where is Bibby at? 
cashing them checks. He saw this executive status. That's true. That's a fact. What um the obvious is the obvious one we got on here is uh, you got we you got Kanye. Please tell me you got Kanye. Yeah, I got Kanye. Okay, that yeah. and that's really the one that niggas was like, you can't have a Chicago Mount Rushmore without Kanye West on. It's impossible. Actually, it makes no fucking sense. Even for the new guys though, I feel like Dirt and Vaughn them like they that ain't they that ain't an ounce of Kanye influence on them niggas. That's true, but Kanye is still relevant though. Like I'm saying, but even if we go back just a little bit before the the comments and all of that shit, before the cancel, he yeah. was still super relevant. <laughs> He's been right. relevant. And when the, you think like, Chicago, you think Kanye West. You just think like, still, yeah, <laughs> like even oh, this new version of him, you're absolutely right. I this like, shit, he had these niggas. He had Dirk on his shit. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like he's done records with some of these niggas. So. I, but I got Kanye, obviously. Who's another one that you had on your? We're probably switching it up after that, though. Mm, I think I was probably saying my other one was Chief Keith. I, I, like, I got him too. I, got I him. feel like that whole what we just spoke of the drill sound that started with him. What we knew of Chicago before him was Twister, Common, Kanye, uh, Backpack. It yeah, Backpack. It you know, that's not Twister, but still. Right. But backpack, it. it so. We didn't associate Chicago with drill, straight up gangster shit. No. And when this nigga came on the scene in the videos with the shirts off and the choppers and the dreads, it's like that shit started a mutation amongst. <laughs> like that's what you had. That was the new outfit for hood niggas all across the world. And I think the Chief Key started it right out of Chicago. I agree, and I have Chief Keef on mind too. Even though I think at this point he's becoming overrated. However. Uh. Only because he doesn't have the records to make. He got two records, bro. Maybe three. I get maybe give you three. He just doesn't have the records to match. He had the influence. He kicked the door down for sure. Niggas was not in the crib with the short dreads and the sticks in the video before dude. Like not to the extent that they are now. That's that's all the young hood nigga videos. He started that for sure. So I have to give it on just influence alone. But if we keeping it a band. Even his song, that's that shit I don't like. Kanye version sounds better. If you listen to Chief Key version, it sounds super regular. Kanye spiced that motherfucker up and had it right. And Chief Keith had the worst verse on it. He sounded terrible. So you take the, on the remix, the original version is different though, right? Yeah, and it is. You know, he got all of those, like I'm not aware of it, but the mixtapes and the street shit, like yeah. he got a lot of those. And, and people, out, you know. People praise the first album, but it ain't. It's some slaw. Like, let me, let me be clear. It, it shit ain't talking about nothing. Um, but I still got him on my list too, though. To be fair, so yeah, I get right. to him. Who you got next on your list? Chance. You mentioned <laughs> <laughs> Young Chance. that nigga. Listen, that nigga couldn't take a picture in front of this Mount Ru Mount Rushmore dude. <laughs> um, Chance. Fuck. No, I I went back. I took it back. So I went, we went new school with Chief Keith. I had to have a new school. I went old school with Common because he was the, to my knowledge, the first person repping Chicago like that, that made it to that level. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I think he came out before Twister. If I'm, or he was popular faster before Twister. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but for me, that was the first person I remember talking about it. So I have him on the list and then plus just what he's done over his career and the fact that really somehow he keeps getting acting roles, which is even more amazing than the than the music That's the uh, most resume. Thing about his career, bro. How does this nigga keep getting acting roles, bro? Like he must know where like the bodies is here, but he know where all the Weinstein shit is. It's something because he's a terrible actor. Five, he's six. Hired. He five six was playing the NBA uh, small forward, bro. Queen Latifah taller than he is. Like, come on. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that nigga couldn't guard Queen Latifah in the paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As he, come she on. The game. Queen Latifah with a straight game in 2010 on that uh, movie we, they in, dude. We saw, <laughs> we saw that movie where he was the cop. Do you remember that? We went to go see it at the yeah. little independent movie thing. And it was like the... <laughs> and he was like a police officer, but they broke out like a spoken word. It was like, man, what the fuck is this? Uh, nah, I, I probably purposely like got that out of my memory. Cause that I, shit was some <laughs> slow. I don't remember that at all. But, it sounded like it was some slow. Musically, he got some shit, so let's be clear. And he, and he dope, too. So like, I, I get to him. He, I think he should be on here on mine. Facts. I feel like since we are not Chicago wins. Our list will be and pretty similar because comments on mine. And the yeah. reason being that that B album 
other than a Kanye West album, that's probably the best Chicago album. Period. Ooh. Like, I don't know nothing up there with that. That shit one through nine, perfect. People were, you used to say when we were coming up, he was the Jay Z of the Midwest or some shit like that, which is a who okay the fuck said that? Paris. They used to say that, man. Look at it, Google it. But yeah, I feel like that that B off the strength of that, he has to be on there. Yeah, I ain't mad at that. Who's your fourth? And my last, my last one is Dirt, man. I feel like the Chief Keith, Chief Keith. Ushered in an era, and Dirk has taken that to superstardom. Chief Keith was still on the ground. People still liked him, though. Like, he was the, you know, it was a cult following that he had. Some mainstream people knew about him. They started to understand him late, so it was kind of cliche once people caught on to it. But Dirk has taken that shit to superstardom. Like you said, when Keith, Chief Keith was popping, he wasn't up there with the hottest names in rap. Right. Dirk. Real, I'm right here with Drake. I'm right here with Ye. Like, I'm the nigga from Chicago. I'm a legit superstar. Me and Lil Baby are working. Anybody at the top of the food chain and rap right now is fucking with me, Dirk. He ushered in that new generation of Chicago. It's not just the Chief Keep Drill hyphy shit, but it's also adding another element of superstardom to it. Yeah. Dirk. Uh, ain't no damn way. Um <laughs> Cause he didn't get on until he moved to Atlanta, on. nigga. Like shit, uh, you gotta oh. do a die. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say you just gonna put him on there, but do a die is hilarious. Now I, I will say back to Dirt though, real quick. I will say that he is the one person that has kind of well him and G Herbo to a certain extent that kind of made it out of that whole like drill wave of Chicago rappers that came and went. Um, kind of similar to Houston when that Houston sound had that boom in 05, 06, and then like everybody kind of disappeared. You thought that was going to happen with Chicago, but LaDirk made the very smart investment in property in Atlanta, moved down here, nigga got some hair dye from Walgreens and grew his dreads out, and that was the smartest thing he ever did, dude. So I will give him that. I'll give him the longevity piece for sure. But I have somebody different in mind, and this person in here, I feel like Kanye walked so this person could run, and that's Lupe Fiasco. Um, mm. I've got to go Lupe. Just number one, probably one of the most skilled Best rappers rapper that we've either. heard. He's rapper. rapping circles around niggas if he really wanted to. But he also has to buy. He's not just somebody that can rap and can't make good music because he's got good albums too. And so I've, I've got him. He's right now teaching a course at, of hip-hop at MIT, which is a big look. And he's just a very interesting person. I honestly wish he had a reoccurring feature on somebody's interview platform because when he speaks, he's really insightful in the way he talks about stuff. And it's always good to hear from Lupe, even off the mic. So I think he's got the resume on and off the mic. Um, being the teacher, that's a big look too, man. So I, I had to go Lupe, even though I wanted to say Twister. Damn shame what happened to him and Royce's podcast, man. He, 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 oh, that's true. I forgot man, about that. Man, man, them niggas got the audience. Damn, I forgot about that. Over oh, fucking COVID. Like, come on, bro. Yeah, I, I, the Lupe is being um, easily the best rapper, rap circles around anybody on this Mount Rushmore. Thanks. Just slipped a mind slip for me. Uh, Dirt, newer generation, like what you were saying, but I don't have a problem at all with Lupe being on there. Even yeah, though I'm yeah. A Lupe fan. Man, y'all run that first Lupe. That first Lupe? Which one is the one with Superstar on there? That's the one. If you are, uh, which is the superstar, uh, the name of the album, I think. Nah, uh uh. Uh-uh. Uh, Hip Hop uh, Saved My Life on there, too. I think that's the cool. The cool. That's that's the motherfucking one. It ain't better like than that, that first album, push, though. Man. Even though that album is fire, though. That kick push, what you talking about? That's That album is fire. Yeah. Straight through, dude, today. <laughs> Can't even lie. Saying. I need to. I'm, I'm gonna go back through his catalog, son. I fuck Jay on there, like that's bad. At first, I'm banging. Mm. Mm. Um, y'all let us know, man. Who's on y'all Mount Rush? That, that's really the four. Let's be honest. Yeah. Let's, I mean, let's, <laughs> let's keep it a stack. Yeah. That's the four. Maybe there's there's five you could probably put because I can see Twister being on here, even though you be hating on Twister. I could not see that. <laughs> Crazy as fuck. I could not see that at all. <laughs> Adrenaline rush, nigga. Man, y'all, y'all niggas and niggas on his side of town in Chicago, the only niggas that fuck with that. Can't make out what he's saying, dude. What nigga, what are you talking about? It could be spinning, Clearly, I'm dude. not a fast rap fan. People know that though. <laughs> like, what, bro? Stop. 
fuck is you talking? Nobody knows what you're saying, dude. Nobody knows, bro. Oh, uh, shit. Hey, man, moving on to some wins or losses. Uh, Labusi's daughter, her 20, his 21-year-old daughter, Ivania? Ivania? Uh, um, she came out over the week on social media, and she's an aspiring rapper, too. She had a freestyle popping off. Her rap name is Poison Ivy. Is this a win or a loss? Poison Ivy, man. It's a big... It's a W for Boosie, man, because hopefully he gets to experience this and not have such bigoted comments towards people with alternative lifestyles, man. So hopefully mm -hmm. this helps Boosie grow up. Hopefully this helps him be a little more tactful when he's speaking about other stuff that, you know, he don't agree with. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it, I, really, the W for me is the, the, the coming out and all that, I really wish that wasn't a big deal no more. Yeah. We're kind of over that. But her actually rapping and sounding decent is, is a much bigger deal to me. Like she was ripping a little freestyle, dude. Like I can't even front. I was impressed. Not even gonna lie. Plus, she grown. She twenty one. I didn't this even point. know she was that old, right? Yeah. Yeah. Know. Like at this point, she grown. She can do what she want. Mm -hmm. Um, win or a loss, your man Mike Jones. Who Mike Jones mm -hmm. refuses to clear his steel tipping sample for ten seventeen rapper Big Fizzle. Big Fizzle. <laughs> That's a L, man. Fuck Mike Jones, like Big Fizzle was saying, man. Nigga, don't try to... Like, I don't understand, nigga. You're not popping nothing. Like, if a nigga reach out to you and like, bro, I'm finna use this, man. Like, why not? Like, yeah. you could probably... And, and I, the only thing that I could possibly see saying is what we were talking about earlier with 1017. Maybe Mike Jones doesn't want a negative image because I think the song called Faux Foes. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, like he must talking about shooting niggas or some shit. Let's deal, man. That's possible. Yeah, like, relax, my nigga. Like, come on, bro. Nobody's going to associate. Like, I, he wasn't on some moral high ground when he was rapping. So the whole nigga to another standard, when they come in, you asking you to clear the sample, just sounds weird to me. Especially if he's the nigga that can clear it. He owns it. Like, come on, Mike Jones. Who? Yeah, I would love to know the story behind this because the uh, Big Fizzle, who's from Arkansas, shout out to Arkansas. That's a uh, young guy that, uh, geez, I mean, excuse me, did Gucci Man sign. He was a football player, uh, state football player. He was like a big deal. Uh, okay, yeah, because this, oh, yeah, 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 for sure. And he's young, too. He's the like youngest 18. person on the label. He's 19. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, he, he put, he, so he took to Instagram to air his grievances. And then the caption, he got old broke hating ass nigga. <laughs> so I'm like, is this coming to, is this some money shit? Like, is he asking for too much for it? Like, was, uh, where did the money, where did him being broke come into play? Because if he was broke, you would think he would accept the, he would sign mm -hmm. off on it because he need the money. Thanks. So I don't, I don't know about that. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe you want a little bit too much. That's possible. Um, speaking of a little bit too much, win or loss for your man, Young Dro. He said he spent five million on clothes in his heyday. Said he could go two years straight without wearing the same thing twice. Is this a win or a loss? Congratulations, Young Dro. <laughs> First of all, let me commend him for this. Young Dro, uh, locally here in Atlanta, he had a uh, summit about all the violence that's happening in Atlanta uh, when that little, the 12 year old kid got killed earlier this year, like around the holidays. At Atlantic he, Station? Yep, yeah, in Atlantic Station. He was on the news, he was talking to reporters, he was having a summit where like he was inviting rappers and people of elk in the community to come and figure out the problem. So shout out to him for that. For sure. But he got robbed if he spent $2 million on polo, man. All this free shit I be seeing Rick Ross having from Balenciaga and all of these no, niggas. Is five million. Let's be clear. Ah, oh, that's even worse. Like, especially if I don't see... Like, I ain't seen Young Dro say, I, I made the $5 million investment and now I'm good and then made me $20 million. So for him to not be as popping right now and tell me he bought $5 million worth of clothes, that's an L to me, bro. Yeah. Because what you going to do with now? Now what you going to do when you ain't got to wear the same shit twice for two years? Who cares? I'm seeing you. Listen, he said this on Vlad and he, let's be clear, he was polo down during the interview still, still. which I'm not mad at. Like, I, I'd actually be dis If I saw Dro without polo on, it'd actually be disappointing. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. I wouldn't care if he already wore it. I'd just be, <laughs> I would be mad if he didn't have polo on. That would, that would hurt a little bit. But five million on clothes, bro. That means you better have gotten ten million for free worth. That's all I want to know. You like, you better have to plug up at Ralph. Here go the thing: Polo not doing it. 
Like they, I didn't see the interviews with Ralph Lauren. He was like, bro, the brand is the brand. I don't need these niggas to advertise. That's why Trick Daddy stopped fucking with it. Cause That's they true. like niggas was pumping the polo and they was like, bro, we we gonna sell without y'all. Like it don't matter if Young Dro got it on or whatever it may be. We sell bed spreads and towels, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> it works selling, bro. No, like I ain't giving you a dime. That's what Ralph Warren was like, <laughs> nigga. Y'all rock this shit if y'all want to, but this the brand, nigga. So I know he didn't get no free shit, which makes it even more ridiculous, man. Oh uh, shit. I will say his um, I'll give him, I gotta give him props on a real talk note. His interview was really good. He talked about his uh, his addiction. He just got out of rehab. He's been doing really well. He's he was on there looking crispy, like triple salute to him, though. It, it was a really good, there's some good clips in there of him talking about it. And his it's ironic because his daughter is going through the same thing. And it, it, you can kind of tell that was eating him up because he felt like she got that from him and mm. he snapped out of it, but she's still in it. And so it, it was just real compelling, man. So like super duper salute to Dro for getting his uh his shit together. I know we it, it was a running kind of joke on here, like. Drow would pop out with a single that was fire and then disappear or fumble right. it. And we'd be like, yeah, what are you doing? Like, we were clowning him for it. It turns out he was going through some real shit, some battling some real demons. And so it's good to see him with his head on straight, level-headed, good to go, man. So it, it was a good interview, in my opinion. That was on Vlad? Yeah, but it's not Vlad talking to him. It's somebody else that he have, he'd have be having from Atlanta on there or some shit. I don't know who this nigga is. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, but it was good. Hey, and real quick, though, update. We talked about Bow Wow wanting a um a hip-hop, mm. like, um a board. Did you know one already exists? Yes, I didn't know that until I was seeing the update like you did. Here's the kicker. Did you go to the website? No, I didn't. So, <laughs> I don't think that... I. Here's one time where I'm going to side with Bow Wow. Okay. I think the Chuck D and them and the niggas that was over it came out and said something about, yep. like, bro, it's not my fault that y'all niggas ain't promoting this shit correctly where no one knows about it. And the membership is free. Mm -hmm. So think about the lack of convincing that they've done in their marketing and promotion of this product. I went to the website, believed that there should be a union, seen it was free, and closed my laptop. For sure. Like, I don't care, bro. Like, I didn't do it. I don't even know what this shit is about. So I I, I understand what Bow Wow was saying. Maybe he should join with them, put a little bit more of a face behind it, but they ain't doing a good job. And even when I went on the site and I'm looking around as far as the benefits of it or who does it help. And then you also know it when you get to the stage in business that we have, when you see shit is free and you kind of look at it like, ah, uh, nah, so some some up with this. Yeah. And so there weren't, true. like, the other noticeable names weren't anybody that, no, like that are active. Like it just there, there wasn't anything compelling about it. Now these are all OGs: Chuck D, KRS One, Dougie Fresh, Curtis yes. Blow. It's, the, it's called the Hip Hop Alliance. Yep. Now, and what I mean by active is, is like I don't see them like unless someone said like they ain't out on the forefront saying stuff about bringing hip hop together. As far as like when Nori says it, it's almost damn near. It used to be every interview Facts. or even with Bow Wow saying it, it catches traction here. These niggas are actually doing it. And I'm having a hard time even getting explanations or finding out what it's about. I feel like they just should be more vocal, especially if it's like you said, Chuck D and the other niggas, KRS-One that already have established themselves as go-to uh, in intellectual spaces, so. Yeah. That's interesting, man. Uh, before we get out of here, real quick, give me something to put put me on some. Got on deck of the week. Uh, I do not. Well, yeah, all right. I'm saying Sean Walsh on deck of the week, man. That's <laughs> my guy right there. <laughs> Sean Walsh on Walsh. deck of the week. Default, yeah, default on deck of the week. We appreciate you, my brother. That's always listening, always supporting in the group chat. Uh, really much love for me to put on is. A uh, new book, fiction, that I started reading by Charleston White. It won the... Charleston White? Just the Charleston? Charleston? No, not Charleston White, sorry. His name is Ch Colston Whitehead. Colston Whitehead, okay. excuse me. Uh, it's called The Nickel Boys. It won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction Works in 2020. Decent book, man. It's a solid book based off of in the 60s. It's about growing up as a little black boy that got incarcerated or something. But I'm four chapters in. It's a really good book. If you like fiction, you want a break, just something to read, and you ain't doing self-help or business stuff, it's a pretty dope book. It's called The Nickel Boys, Nickel Boys by Colston Whitehead. 
I thought you said nipple boys. I was like, what the hell is that, dude? A, a Zane book? <laughs> no, nah, the nipple boys. What you got? Um, uh, I have a podcast, Spotify original joint. Um, it's called The Conviction of Max B. It is very interesting. A little five part series, very well done. Um, if you know anything about Max B, you know he got hit for 75 years. If you've ever listened to French Montana's verse on Stay Scheming, then you knew that already. He is set to be released in uh, the spring, it's, uh, really close around the corner. And to hear the story of how he got them 75 years is very interesting. I highly recommend checking it out. It's a very easy listen, easy five piece. Uh, very well done, man, with the boy from um, your boy Jinx from Complex uh, is the one doing the yeah. um, narrating. Easy. Pretty well done, man. I liked it. I learned a lot facts easy like you said you put it in the group chat i started listening and probably finished easy. the same day yeah um, exactly it was good yeah his he lawyer dude the the original lawyer that they had the negative i ain't even gonna blow yeah, it that is two of them both of them though <laughs> two of them like that nigga max be like hey, the whole thing bro like i can't believe that nigga got some yeah, that's listen nuts. to it man we might need to have a, a topic or a discussion about it next time when y'all get to listen as listeners man but that was a good podcast about the hey man maybe maybe next week's episode y'all listen to that man we might make that up the episode or something because yeah, it's man, definitely some layers to it absolutely we definitely need to review it or something next week so we'll do that shout out man appreciate you guys tapping in with you on deck tv show 10 years strong this year man we may try to do something special for the 10 year anniversary but we appreciate you guys have been rocking with us for 10 years man absolutely man hey leave us a comment on youtube.com slash on deck tv man to the next time we are out cute